Hello and thanks for joining us on Encore. Coming up on today's show. <laughs> My guest is Lebanese filmmaker Vace Bulgurjian. His latest film, Tramontane, is the story of a personal quest for identity as a blind musician goes in search of some home truths. Protagonist Rabi drives this cinematic journey and the background's provided by the scars of Lebanon's painful past. He's here in the studio to tell us more. Vache, thanks so much for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. This film, Tramontane, features a very charismatic central character, Rabbi, a blind musician who's going in search, well, to, trying to solve a family mystery, a very important mystery. How did you build the story? How did you create this character? Well, it began, I can start from the very beginning of the evolution of this script. And uh, I was developing uh, other projects related to identity and history in Lebanon. And I came across the writings of John Ho, uh, specifically a book called uh, Touching the Rock, in which he describes his gradual loss of sight. And uh, in the process, uh, until he reaches what he calls deep blindness, where he doesn't remember uh, his own body and uh, even what light looks like. And uh, eventually he has an existential crisis uh, and he, he decides, he, he has a very powerful statement in which he says, um, I would, uh, one has to recreate oneself or be destroyed. And uh, this existential crisis that John Hall was describing with his experience with blindness um, was, was somehow resonated with me and uh, the history of Lebanon that I was trying to explore. Both, at the end of the day, both are crises of defining the self. And that's where this central character came from. Absolutely, yes. And um, so uh, I, I tried to incorporate the realities of Lebanon within the life of uh, this young man, who, and then uh, the story evolved. Yeah. And the actor Barakat Jabour, he is in fact a blind musician in real life. He's not acting in, in that ret uh, respect. How difficult or different was it directing uh, a blind actor? Well, I knew from the very start that I wanted to work with a blind man uh, to play the, the real-life blind man to play the lead role of the film. And uh, this brought about a very, uh, e I mean, an ethical issue from uh, even after writing the first draft, which was to say that um, uh, here I was going to work with a man who uh, does not see and he was going to play a role which he would never see, a film which he would never see. And so I decided to uh, start casting right away to learn more about blindness. And uh, very quickly I learned that everyone I met within the community of blind men and women in Lebanon, all, everyone enjoyed cinema, the theater, and television, and uh, they were following this story. And so, and that was, no, and then Barakat was no exception. He, uh, he enjoyed cinema, he enjoyed television, and he recognized actors by their voices. So when, uh, uh, when, we, when I met him after several months of casting, he was very excited about acting and wa wanted to learn more. And uh, so uh, we started uh, developing methods of acting, approaches to acting. Uh, Baraka Jabur and Cynthia Zaven, who is the composer of the film, started developing approaches and interpretations to the music, which is all classical Arabic music. Um, and so we, over the three years that followed, uh, he really in inhabited the role. And by, indeed, by the time uh, we were about to start shooting, uh, he had memorized the entire screenplay, including wow. everyone else's lines. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, well, uh, let's take a look at him in action. This is an extract from the film featuring actor Barakat Javour. What is your name? Where are you? Where are you? I'm going to talk to you. Where are you? 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 
سمر مالك ليش في شي مشكلة؟ أنت ليش بدك الباسبور؟ أنا بدي أعمل باسبور لأنه بدي سافر أنا والجوقة على أوروبا جوقة؟ أنت بتغني؟ نعم إجتنا دعوة الجوقة على أوروبا وبدي روح معهم ما فيك تروح لمحل عفوا هيدا الصبي خيك؟ هيدا الصبي جاري بس ما عم بفهم عليكم شو المشكلة خليك رايق روح روح هاي الهوية منا أنونية ما فيك تعمل فيها باسبور now we can see there how much the authorities are insisting on his family background, his bloodlines. Why do you think that's so important in Lebanon? Well, I think it's important anywhere in the world. Uh, I mean, in order to, today we can't move from one place to the next without any identification papers, right? So, um, and in Lebanon, certainly, uh, uh, I mean, it's, a, it's very important to have proper identification papers. And uh, what he encounters in the film is something that is very normal. Uh, in other words, this kind of background check, etc., is it's very normal. So, um, but there happens to be a problem with his uh, papers. Mm. Uh, <laughs> So. Now, as part of that generation born in the 1980s, Rabi finds himself affected, administratively at least, by the Lebanese civil war. But what do you think are the larger consequences on private lives, even, of this conflict? Uh, the, that is actually what I was trying to explore with this film. Um, here we are, uh, 26, 20, uh, 27 years after the end of the armed conflict in Lebanon, and we still live under its shadow. And so the, the conflict may have ended, but the war, let's say, may have not ended. Uh, and uh, this is what I wanted to see, uh, to explore, examine with this film. What, what do people, how are people's lives shaped by uh, the history of Lebanon, mm -hmm. the political decisions that have been made? And so someone who is, uh, has nothing to do with uh, politics is affected, just as all of our lives were after the war. I wanted to ask you, as a filmmaker then, not just in your private life, but in your professional and artistic life, how do you think you've been shaped by the circumstances around you? Well, I, the, the, you know, the civil war in Lebanon, I was born the year that the civil war began, and uh, I lived through it. I spent my childhood in Lebanon throughout the war, and uh, it is the most traumatic event of the late 20th century in Lebanon. It, is, it has indeed shaped the country that we live in today. And it has affected uh, all of our lives. Every single Lebanese has been affected by that conflict. And uh, this is just one example. And, uh, you know, and it happens to be fiction. Uh, but uh, real life stories could be, um, are much more dramatic sometimes. Now, in the film, I noticed that Rabi encounters lots of partial truths, misunderstandings, or things that we're never sure if they're conflicting reports or parts of the truth or not mm -hmm. the truth or lies. It's very ambiguous. It's intriguing. Do you th are you trying to say that it's futile to look for the truth? No, uh, it's not futile. Uh, in the film, he does come to some sort of conclusion. Um, but uh, since, since the end of the war, there, there hasn't been a trenchant examination of, of this traumatic event, uh, of, of the war. Uh, and it happens to be, as I said, the most, uh, one of the most traumatic events nationwide. Uh, so uh, there, uh, the, the trenchant examination does not exist, and a single narrative, national narrative, does not exist. So each community has been left to devise its own narrative of this uh, conflict of this uh, of this trauma, let's say, and and as Rabia goes across the country, this is in a sense what he encounters on a on a personal level. So uh, e even though they're not talking about the, the the country's past necessarily, they're talking about his past. He's interested in his past, but even then, they're not able to offer him uh, a concrete account. And that's very well uh, represented in these moments of light and dark visually in, in the film. Now, I believe some of your favourite artists, some of your references, are people who work with memory, like yourself, W.G. Siebold, for example. Right. How do you render something so personal and intimate as memory in a public piece of work, like a film? Well, it's uh, extremely uh, difficult, but like one has to transcend the self, I think, and... Uh, 
and try to, uh, well, in the words of uh, the great Abbas Kiristami, uh, he says, in order to be universal, one has to be rooted in one's own culture. And I would uh, go further and say one has to be rooted in oneself. So ultimately, um, in order to be comfortable discussing one's own memory and identity, one has to go through a struggle with the self and self-awareness and self-examination uh, before being able to sort of trying to uh, for, uh, form a fiction, fictional work, uh, a creative work that examines the same uh, topics. Mm, and a bit of yourself probably ends up in it in the end. Absolutely. I think it's uh, inevitable to separate the artist from the work or the author from the work. It's inevitable. And uh, this certainly comes from a very personal place for me. As, uh, and I think it will be familiar with uh, any Lebanese who lived during the war, and indeed any, uh, anyone who has lived anywhere in the world through a war, and they've had to flee conflict, move around, and, um, and uh, try to define where home is, and to try to define uh, who we are to others mm -hmm. and to ourselves. Vajay, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. Tramontane is on general release from March the 1st here in France. We're finishing with another exponent of Lebanese cinema, Wissam Sharaf's recent film, Heaven Sent, which sees a former militiaman return to his country in somewhat mysterious circumstances. It's a tragic comic and kind of surreal take on some of Lebanon's serious social issues. Here's a short clip. Remember to check out our website too, and you can also keep up with Encore on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this.